Welcome to the enchanting world of Irma Ladaus, a classic film from 1963 that transports us to the vibrant streets of Paris. As we delve into this cinematic masterpiece, one can't help but wonder which classic Hollywood actor left an indelible mark on your memory in this captivating tale of love and intrigue. This enduring symbol of the film industry is a testament to its timeless appeal. What qualities have allowed Irma Ladaus to stand the test of time, becoming a cherished piece of cinematic history? Was it the magnetic performances, the gripping storyline, or perhaps the evocative portrayal of a bygone era that resonates with audiences even today? Before we explore some fascinating trivia about this beloved film, we're eager to hear from you. What is your most cherished memory or personal experience related to Irma Ladaus? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We'd love to immerse ourselves in the collective nostalgia. Now, let's uncover some intriguing tidbits about the show. Did you know that the film underwent a meticulous production process, with the streets of Hollywood ingeniously transformed to resemble the romantic avenues of Paris? The meticulous attention to detail adds an extra layer of authenticity to the narrative enhancing the overall viewing experience. As we wrap up this exploration, we invite you to join the conversation. What classic Hollywood actor stole the show for you, and what enduring qualities make this movie an everlasting symbol of the industry? Share your thoughts and engage with fellow enthusiasts in the comments section. The magic of Irma Ladaus lives on through our collective memories. In 1963, the film Irma Ladaus hit the screens, directed by Billy Wilder. Jack Lemmon took on the role originally played by Keith Mitchell on Broadway. Interestingly, Mitchell's character was a law student, not a policeman, as portrayed by Lemmon in the film. The Broadway musical, which opened in 1960 and earned a Tony Award nomination for Best Musical, featured Elizabeth Seale's award-winning performance in the title role. The film departed from its musical roots, discarding all the Broadway songs by Marguerite Monat. Instead, Ander Previn composed the score, with our language of love becoming a central and romantic theme. Despite the non-musical approach, Shirley MacLaine does sing some words for the song Distant while dancing on a billiard table. For Star Trek enthusiasts, Grace Lee Whitney, known as Yeoman Janice Rand, had a role in Irma Ladaus's Kiki the Cossack. A notable casting choice that added an extra layer of interest for fans of the iconic science fiction series. It's worth noting that Billy Wilder initially wanted Marilyn Monroe for the lead role, impressed by her performance in Some Like It Hot. Unfortunately, Monroe passed away before production began, and the role eventually went to Mac Lane. In summary, Irma Ladaus, born from a Tony-nominated Broadway musical, underwent significant changes for its 1963 film adaptation. Lemon, stepping into Mitchell's shoes, brought a law student to life in Wilder's non-musical rendition, while Whitney's presence added a unique touch for Star Trek fans. The film's musical legacy, however, lived on through Previn's score and the enduring charm of our language of love. Shirley MacLaine, driven by faith in Billy Wilder, and Jack Lemon, signed on for Irma Ladaus without reading the script. Her trust in the director and co-star highlights the collaborative spirit that shaped the 1963 film. Despite initial reservations about the screenplay, Mac Lane's commitment to the project paved the way for her surprising Best Actress Oscar nomination. She later expressed astonishment at the recognition, deeming the film crude and clumsy. Mac Lane's mixed feelings toward the movie, coupled with her unexpected award nod, offer a fascinating glimpse into the behind-the-scenes dynamics of this cinematic endeavor. The actress' candid reflections add a layer of complexity to the legacy of Irma Ladaus, a title that, when translated from French, resonates with sweetness ironically contrasting Mac Lane's nuanced experience with the film. This dichotomy between the film's reception and its accolades provides a unique lens through which to explore the dynamics of this cinematic venture. Irma Ladaus, both sweet in name and contentious in reception, stands as a testament to the unpredictable nature of filmmaking in the early 1960s. Nestor's nickname in the film is Tiger. About 10 years later, Lemon would star in the film Save the Tiger. In Irma Ladaus, Jack Lemon's character Nestor goes by the nickname Tiger. It's a moniker that adds a layer of personality to his role in the 1963 film. Interestingly, this playful alias took on added significance about a decade later when Lemon starred in another film titled Save the Tiger. 
The coincidence of this recurring nickname in Lemon's filmography highlights an interesting thread in his career. While the movie is often remembered for its unique narrative, and the challenges faced during its production. The choice of Nestor's nickname as Tiger connects Irma Ladaus to Lemon's later work. Save the Tiger, a film from the 1970s, stands as a separate piece in Lemon's filmography, but the link through the shared nickname adds a touch of continuity to the actor's diverse roles over the years. This subtle connection offers film enthusiasts a retrospective insight into Lemon's career trajectory, showcasing the unexpected ways in which elements from one movie can resurface in another. As Irma Ladaus carved its place in cinematic history, the nickname Tiger left a lasting mark, echoing in a later film, and contributing to the nuanced tapestry of Jack Lemmon's on-screen legacy. Jack Lemmon's involvement in the 1963 film brought more than just his acting skills to the set. In a surprising turn of events, he married Felicia Farr in Paris during the movie's shoot. Adding a touch of romance to the behind-the-scenes narrative, the wedding saw Billy Wilder and Richard Quine, regular director of Lemon, stepping in as joint best men. This unexpected union amidst the film's production offers a unique glimpse into the personal lives of the stars, showcasing a memorable chapter in Lemon's journey during Irma Ladaus. In preparation for her role in the film, Shirley MacLaine delved into the world of Parisian prostitutes. Traveling to Paris, she engaged with real-life sex workers to understand their experiences. Surprisingly, they invited her to witness a customer interaction through a small hotel door window. Reluctantly, MacLaine agreed, providing a unique insight into the gritty realism she brought to her portrayal. Meanwhile, during Jack Lemmon's scenes in Les Howes Markets, a mishap occurred. A genuine pig's head, a common ingredient in various global delicacies, slipped from Lemon's grasp. This unplanned incident added an authentic touch to the movie, capturing a moment that mirrored the unpredictability of life on the streets of Paris. Notably, Irma Ladaus marked the second collaboration between Shirley MacLaine and Jack Lemon under the direction of Billy Wilder. Their previous joint venture was in the apartment where the duo shared scenes playing cards. This recurring theme of card playing between Mac Lane and Lemon and Wilder's films adds a subtle but consistent element to their on-screen partnership. These behind-the-scenes anecdotes provide a glimpse into the meticulous preparation undertaken by Mac Lane, the unexpected realism brought about by Lemon's market mishap, and the recurring on-screen connection between the two lead actors. These nuanced details contribute to the overall richness of Irma Ladaus, a film that goes beyond its scripted narrative to capture authentic moments in the vibrant tapestry of 1960s cinema. As we bid adieu to the captivating tale that unfolded in the cinematic masterpiece of 1963, it's not just the reels that cease to spin, it's a portal closing on a timeless realm. The magic of Irma Ladaus lies not merely in the frames and sequences, but in the indelible imprints it leaves on the canvas of our own stories. Now, take a moment to journey back, traverse the celluloid avenues, and discover the personal alleys where Irma Ladaus strolled. Perhaps it was a lazy Sunday afternoon when you stumbled upon it, or a late-night revelation that seeped into the corners of your consciousness. What echoes of the film resonate in your own narrative? What hues has it lent to the palette of your memories? This isn't just a farewell, it's an invitation to weave your thoughts into the rich tapestry of shared experiences. What scenes stirred your soul? Which characters found a home in the theater of your reflections? Irma Ladaus is more than a movie, it's a catalyst for introspection, a mirror reflecting the myriad shades of our human connection to art. Let the discourse unfold. Share your musings, your cherished moments, and the emotions that this cinematic gem has stirred within you. In this collective symphony of voices, we find the true essence of Irma Ladausia Bridge connecting hearts across time, inviting us to dance in the shadows of its celluloid alleys. Thank you for embarking on this cinematic voyage with us. Your thoughts add layers to the narrative, making it a living, breathing entity. Until our stories intersect again, revel in the memories, the musings, and the magic that is cinema.